Moreno is one of those guys. <laughs> he don't look like he should be able to fight, bro. He can bang, bro. He can bang. The next fight incorporates Mr. Santiago Ponzinibbio. Mm. Giving me a mm. run for my money with these. And yeah. Alex Morano. Um, yeah. But, but before I, I throw you the oop, I'm just letting you know. When they walk to the arena or walked in the octagon, they start fighting. I'm looking at this shit like, okay, I see what y'all did, <laughs> UFC. You got the two fights, got us interested. You started off with two up and coming hungry fighters, young. Start us uh -oh. off there, undefeated. Yep. And then next fight, you got Darren Till. Okay, we're interested. We're invested. And this shit comes, and I'm like, I see what you're doing. You're just trying to get us over to, to Patty and uh, the main event. Like you're just you're just shoveling it along. You put this smack dab in the middle, like an intermission. Like, hey, if you need to go get some popcorn or you got a piss or something. Go do that right now because what's happening? <laughs> what's happening here? I don't know if you if you need to be too interested. But that being said, it was a good fight, bro. <laughs> Moreno is one of those guys. <laughs> he don't look like he should be able to fight, bro. He can bang, bro. He can bang. I think that's the issue I was having with this fight because I was looking at him like, bro, what is this miniature Tyson Fury doing out here? Yes, bro? yes. No, bro. He can bang, bro. Like, he's he's one of them. Um, in the defense of the UFC, this fight was made in short notice because Robbie Lawler pulled out the fight. We were supposed to get Robbie Lawler versus Ponzinibbio. So, which... Which is impressive that Ponzinibbio won because he wasn't even preparing for this type of fighter. You know, he had to he had to right. pivot last minute. So, right. Um, but um, what, what do you think about the fight? The the fight was good. They they banged. They scrapped. Bro, Moreno is a is a fight like he can fight. He can fight. So, with that being said, they, this was no walk in the park. Like Moreno took it on short notice. And which lets you know, like, he didn't have enough time to have a training camp for this, but he comes in there to fight, bro. So, um, seeing that fight, it was like, this is what I expected. And um, you don't often get to see these type of fights get run back. But I'm sure Moreno's thinking, like, I wish I had a training camp to run this back because, like, uh, I just got caught at the end or whatever. And he was winning the fight. He was winning it. And this is what happens when you don't have a proper training camp or, for example, um, here's a little bit of foreshadowing. When you're training for a three-round fight and you end up fighting a five-round fight, those later rounds you did not train for or you get a fight on short notice, you're not ready for all three rounds. And this is like, this is what happens. So it's unfortunate, but I would look at it as I was winning this fight and I got caught whether that was a mental lapse, uh, a physical lapse and in, in, uh, being tired or whatever the case may be, I was on my way to win and uh, I just got caught. So next time, you know, I'll, uh, I guess, just be more prepared. Just be more prepared. So, uh, but what can you do? You took the final short notice. I'm sure the company appreciates that and I'm sure they, they hook you up. So like and it ends up being like a banger so like i'm sure they're hooking you up yeah and uh, uh all the fighters got 50,000 um as like a bonus so mm -hmm. who had a finish who had a finish yes ah so not all yes. fighters very not all very fighters. important very important distinction exactly um and definitely not him but i don't i don't think this is one of those fights where his stock dropped by any means no nah. Um, and I'm sure I'm sure Dana White and the UFC appreciates those fighters that are willing to step into the octagon short notice, uh, you know, not prepared for the opponent like that. That is a uh, I mean, that's just doing good by the company. So you, you yeah, it keeps that, it going. Yeah, keeps it going. And and 
hopefully that leads to a break for you somewhere down the line. Like if I'm a UFC yeah. promoter, I'm not looking at him like, all right, just lost. Now we got to drop him down. Now we got to do X, Y, and Z. Like for me, that's, he would at least just stay the same. Like, mm -hmm. th thanks yeah. for going in there and filling the gap. See what, what Dana White has to say about somebody like Connor. Um, obviously it's Connor McGregor, but he says, he says, um, Connor never turned down a fight. And he always said yes to whatever we needed. So when it comes time for me to do him a favor, I'm going to do that. Now, that may be a, you may think, or the, the casual may think it's Conor McGregor. So they're saying this, but this is kind of like how the company works. You see it all from time and time again. They constantly, Dana constantly looks out for specific, like for people, especially when they're doing like, when they're doing the dirty work. And he may not say it out in the public. And they may not say it, but then you get more insight to it later. And it's like the best way, I think I heard somebody say like, the best thing you can do as a fighter in the UFC is stay ready. Cause you're, they're going to give you the opportunities. And if you, the, um, who comes to mind? Kevin Holland. Dana White did not like Kevin Holland, did not like Big Mouth in the beginning. Cause all he did was talk in the ring. With that being said, Kevin Holland stays ready, takes short notice fights, takes, well, I think he takes like, I think he might have a record for a calendar year, like, or for a 12 month span, the amount of fights he's done in a 12 month span. If I'm not mistaken, it's seven. This is how you become uh, PayPal, uh, best friends with Dana White. This is how you become, um, these fools are trading gifts in terms of sneakers with each other. You show up, you fight, you do what you gotta do. And even if you're losing, we appreciate it. And that, I mean, it's, it's okay. Well, that's the example of getting where you fit in. Like if you're not, yeah. if you're not a championship caliber fighter, you have to figure out what's going to keep you paid and what's going to keep you um, in the organization. So whether that's taking a lot of fights, short notice fights, just being able to show up on the card, whether that's going on podcast interviews, starting up your own thing, building up your own brand or, whether that's, uh, I don't know, let's throw out something random here. Maybe like doing the MAGA thing and and su supporting the NYPD type of deal. Like whatever <laughs> can keep you branded and keep people talking about you, negative, good, indifferent. That is the type of stuff that keeps you paid as a fighter and keeps you in the organization, especially if uh, you might not have the skills of a championship fighter. So. And that's what might get you a Hamza Chamaya fight. Right. Even, right. even if, hey, and, and, and that fight allows you, see, and you can pick a fight backstage. And I, I don't know how that went down. I'm just saying. Right, right, but right. That fight allows you to even further your mission because now you're fighting Hamza Chamaya, big fight on Nate Diaz's, what might be his last UFC fight and card. But also, you took no damage. You tapped out in about 20 seconds and now you get to go fight again. You're, you're still on your mission and you're paid. So, um, and main eventing. So thanks for watching certified jesters. If you like the video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe. If you want to see more content like this and don't forget to ring the bell. So you never miss a post.